What's up, everybody? Doc Doc1985. There's levels to this. All right, man. Let's let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I I, I wish I could be extremely excited for this video, but as I was thinking about, you know, what I was gonna say and different points I wanted to talk about. If anything, I'm kind of disappointed. <clears throat> but the true difference between whether or not you're going to get an Xbox Series X or a PS5 at the basic level boils down to this. Do you want value or do you want games? Now, the, the problem is that even though on the surface, the Xbox Series X looks like it's going to be the system that's going to provide you more value. Um, and obviously, we're talking about Game Pass, right? Because you got to have that subscription. And the PS5 is a system that, on paper, looks like it's going to be the one that's going to provide the games solely based on what Sony has done this last generation. That still comes together and almost blurs and, and, and can end up being something where really good games become really good value and game cat game pass could provide really good games so it's not black and white i wish i wish it really was i wish it really was but we have to work with what we have right now okay at launch none of these systems let me take that back at launch there's not many games that are going to be console exclusive meaning just to the ps5 or just to the xbox series x many of the games are going to be able to be played on the ps4 and microsoft is not lying about it you're going to be able to play a lot of their games on the old xbox or on pc thank you for not lying about that sony like you did but regardless no real exclusives right that unfortunately hurts Sony because that's what really Sony is riding on is the fact that last generation they had amazing games. So we believe in Sony. We believe that Sony is going to be able to provide great games this generation. And I believe them when they said that they weren't going to worry about the games running on the PS4. They were going to focus on making sure that the games ran on the PS5 and they were for the PS5 and they weren't going to worry about it running on the PS4 at all. If you're out there thinking, thinking that making sure a game can run on the PS4 does not somehow hinder the experience of the PS5, I don't understand how you think that. I don't understand. The SSD on this PS5 is something out of this world compared to all you Sony fans. So how, if they want to use a true power of that SSD, how are they going to make a game that can run exactly the same on the ps4 just lower resolution or something like 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 i don't i don't i don't understand that explain that to me i'm not a technical person explain that to me so games wise i think sony we have faith and trust in sony but they kind of messed up with the whole pre-order thing saying that they were gonna tell us when we're gonna drop it and then they just dropped it the whole uh games where we're we're, we're focused on next gen games and then now you're not focused on next gen games it's better versions of a game but they're still can be played on the ps4 now this is microsoft's offering okay the xbox series x the actual box the actual console i don't i have no idea i'm being honest with you i'm listen i'm gonna attack both companies i have no idea why you would get an xbox series x if you're not gonna get Game Pass, that I, I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't, I don't understand it. Game Pass is Microsoft's selling point. Now, here's the value of Game Pass, right? For a subscription-based service, you pay, I think it's like fourteen dollars a month right now, right? You pay fourteen dollars a month. You get Xbox Live, right? So you'll be able to play online. You get Xbox Game Pass, which is a collection of something like 100 plus games that you can download 
on either PC or console. You could just get Game Pass for console. I think it's a little bit cheaper. Um, but I, if I was you, I would get it for both. Even if you don't have a PC right now, just get it for both because you never know. You might want to get a PC later. And if you do get a PC later, then boom, you already have a library of games that you can play. That's just freaking genius to me. And they do play better on the PC because I, I have it. So I played uh, Hellblade on the Xbox One, went ahead, downloaded it on my PC, picked up the game where I left off, and it ran way better on my PC because obviously it's using the PC hardware. So that's just genius. So the value of Game Pass is amazing. Amazing. Now, Microsoft is really smart about this because regardless you don't need an Xbox to get into their ecosystem or you don't need the new Xbox to get into the ecosystem. You could go ahead, wait for these systems to, to drop and buy an old Xbox One X and still use Game Pass. <laughs> when it comes to the games though and the value, right? It really depends up to you. Is it worth for you to pay $14 a month and have access to all these games, but a lot of these games are old games? Like right now, the games that are on there are obviously going to be this generation games. So they got like Gears of War 4, Gears of War 5. They got the Master Chief Collection on there. They got Sea of Thieves. They got uh, Crackdown 3. They got um, they got a whole bunch of games on there. They got a lot of games on there. Okay, But is that worth it to you? If you're someone that buys games, if someone that those games that I just mentioned, if you have already played those games and beaten those games or whatever, you might not need it. So to you, it might not make a difference. And then you got to think about this. Sony is going to charge for online. It's the same way Nintendo's charging, the same way Microsoft is charging. So regardless, you're going to pay a monthly fee to play online. Now, if you're paying a monthly fee to pay online, and you're also getting access to 100 plus games, plus you're also getting the ability to play games on the PC or console, and I even forgot to mention xCloud, so you could play, you could stream games on your phone, on your tablet, and soon it'll be on PC as well, that's, that's an incredible value, that value is really hard to beat, I don't care who you are, I don't care who you are, so, Xbox Series X, Versus the PS5. Value. Versus games. And again. This is where it gets really difficult. You don't really need. The Xbox Series X. To experience. The value. Of Game Pass. So. Why would you get one? Sony. You can get a PS5 if you want, but they really don't have any games right now yet. And that's really what their bread and butter is. The other thing about this, Sony is going to charge $70 a game. $70 a game. This is about to be a very expensive next gen i don't know man i don't know i don't know right now today i can look you in your eyes and honestly tell you i am leaning towards the xbox series x and the only reason i'm leaning towards the xbox series x is because like i said in my previous videos i, I i've already subscribed to game pass and i love it i think it's i think it's ridiculous Understand who I am, though, right? I don't play games when they come out. So when I go on Game Pass, like 98% of those games, I haven't played yet. So I literally have a library of 100. And I literally went from having, I don't know, something like 15 Xbox One games to now having over 100. Like that. Then I, I can play on my PC if I wish, I could play on my Xbox, and I also have access to, <laughs> which is ridiculous, to xCloud, and I can play on my phone, so to me, it makes sense, so with that being said, I'm going to get the Xbox Series X, so that I could play those games that I have on Game Pass, and when they come out, at the highest 
possible graphic fidelity power, whatever you want to call. I'm not getting the S, I'm getting the X. Okay. Sony. As much as I want to get a PS5 at launch right now, I don't see why I would do it. I, I don't see why I would do it. So Microsoft strategy, in my case, at least worked. They got me hooked into Game Pass. I got it now. And if I'm going to pay an online subscription, I must pay. I might as well pay for the one that's giving me giving me more value. That's just the way I feel. Here's the thing. I have no reason to believe that Sony is not going to deliver. To deliver, I think they will. I think the next. I mean, look at what they did with the man. Look what they did with the PS3. Look at the games on the PS3 that Sony came out with. All the Uncharted, like those were awesome games. The Last of Us actually came out on the PS3. A cra- crazy games. Um, God of War. I mean, then the PS4. They didn't. They didn't miss a beat either. All the games that came out on the PS4. Man, like Sony. Sony can make games. So I know eventually, eventually there will be a game that I'm going to see that I'm going to be like, probably going to be a Sony exclusive that I'm going to be like, yeah, that's definitely worth worth getting. See, this generation, when the PS4 and the Xbox, I got the PS4 first because, to be honest with you, it was a more powerful system. That's why I got it. And it was a huge, huge cherry on top, the fact that the PS4 had better games, better exclusives. But I tell you what, man, I like I ain't tripping on Microsoft. Like I just started playing um Gears 4 and within the first freaking 10 minutes of that game, I was I was hooked. I was I was entertained. Like it was it was dope. So <laughs> look, man, a, a game doesn't have to be a 10 out of 10 for you to enjoy. It, right? So every game is not going to be The Last of Us. It's just not it's just not. You can still enjoy it, though. I'll give you an example. I enjoyed Crisis 2. A lot of people didn't like it. Okay. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed Crisis 3 as well. Will I compare it ever to a game like The Last of Us? Of course not. Of course not. But did it entertain me just as much? And was I satisfied by the time the experience was done? Yes. The difference is, if you were to ask me which one is a must-play game, someone that's never played either or, I'm going to tell you go ahead and play The Last of Us. But if you can play both, go ahead and play both. So, only it's only going to go so far with the game, Sony. This, I guess this is what I'm saying. It's only going to go so far. Because eventually you got to provide value to us too. You have to provide value to us too. Especially with micro with what Microsoft is doing. It's like they're like twisting Sony's hand, like what you're gonna do. And you can see it. Sony came out with that uh what they called it PS collection or whatever. We could play a whole bunch of uh PS PS4 games or whatever that are exclusives. I mean that's a cute try, but it's still not it's still not what the X Cloud was giving you, it's still not what Game Pass is giving you. So value versus games. And it's gonna intertwine, like I said. If Sony Next Generation comes out with games that just you just can't deny their value, meaning they're all they're all must play games, then okay, maybe maybe you have a right to charge seventy dollars for that experience. Maybe I don't know. But Microsoft, on the other hand, fourteen dollars a month. I don't know how you beat that. I don't know how you beat that. I'm still confused. I'm still leaning towards the Xbox Series X. I made a video before talking about why I would get either or. And then <laughs> the main reason why I would have, like, no lie, gotten a PS5 would have been just for the fact that I believed that Sony was looking at next generation and giving the next generation the respect it deserves and not not having those games play on the PS4. Yes, I guess it's pro... I understand it's pro-consumer to do that. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. But 
I don't think that's pro gamer or pro. It's not moving. It's not moving technology forward. Show me what this SSD does. That's all I'm saying. Show me what this power does. Both systems will actually fall under this. I, I haven't seen any gameplay yet. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't seen any gameplay yet. Like real gameplay running on the systems. Okay. That really show me the leaps and bounds of power compared to the PS4 or the Xbox One S. I didn't even say PS4 Pro or the Xbox One X. I I haven't. I haven't. I haven't seen any gameplay. I've heard a lot of talk for both companies, but I haven't seen any single real game. Please send me the link. I'm sure that it's got to be out there. It's got to be out there. It's got to be out there. Of real gameplay, something running on the Xbox Series X, that's the next generation game. Something running on the PS5, that's the next generation game. <laughs> that is really actually running way better than anything that we have now. Show me the game. Show me the footage. So I don't know, man. This next generation. Is... <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. I don't think it's looking good at all. But for now, I'm going to go with the value. And I know what Game Pass is. I'm experiencing it right now. So Xbox Series X. Right now, you got my money. Doc Dog 1985, there's levels to this. Yo, Sony fans, please don't crush me on this one. Just just talk to your boy. Tell me. Tell me why I'm gonna get a PS5. You tell me. And don't use cross um cross platform games. Because if the game can run on the Xbox Series X, on paper right now it looks like it's gonna run better. Because it's a more powerful console. I don't care if it's more powerful by one teraflop, 0.5 teraflops. I, I don't care. It's the more powerful console. Right now, as I understand SSD, it just means that you're going to be able to load the game faster than me. Okay, that's cool. I got to wait an extra two seconds. That's cool. That's like, uh, I mean, no knock on anybody, but like, it's like people that pay for, uh, um, to skip ads on YouTube. Like, dog, it's a skip button. That's worth $10 to you? Press the skip. I mean, if you ballin', do what you do, baby. Doc Dog 195. There's levels to this. We out. Peace.